Greetings and welcome to this edition of Positronic Hypersonic. I'm Barry P. Cook. I want to talk about the latest episode of Doom Patrol. It was called Undead Patrol. And it starts off with Constantine ripoff Willoughby working with the chief's disembodied head, which he talks to by means of some kind of magic for a couple of minutes. But then he takes over for the head and I guess uses it to call Baphomet, who shows up. She's that like unicorn spirit thing. And I don't know why he summons her, but he's talking to her as the chief for a couple seconds, but she leaves. And then Darren from the previous season or a previous season shows up and steals the chief's head. Madame Rouge talks with the team over tea as they can't seem to stop itching. And she questions them about the chief's whereabouts, though she doesn't know why she's trying to get in contact with him. She's lost her memory during time travel, which is what she does in that digging machine that we saw at the end of the previous episode. And Cliff, of course, says, well, time travel's impossible. Rita then remembers Rouge's suit being worn by the lady that shoved her back into the diner to be killed back before they died a couple episodes ago. And she steals part of her machine so that when she tries to go back to before the chief died, you know, to talk to him or whatever, she can't, which strands her there. At which point she tasks Victor with fixing her time machine. Meanwhile, Larry seems to be suffering from radiation poisoning, I guess in the absence of his passenger or something similar. And Victor has some kind of rash. Victor and his dad argue about Victor's ex and Victor gets his dad to disclose that there was an experimental synthetic skin that could have been used on him when he had his injury, but wasn't, which gets Victor upset. Rita shows Lady Rouge the secret mystery alarm thing, and Lady Rouge finds something in there. Jane and Cliff talk about wanting to burn an effigy of the chief. Rita then gets it in her head that she is Rouge, and therefore a time traveler to be, which, Larry assured her she's not before she seems to feel an urge to eat him. And she actually licks his head. Lady Rouge watches a film strip at the house that it seems was what was in the secret alarm spot thing. And then she does some kind of a weird dance before seemingly learning that she's a shapeshifter from the video, from the film. The team starts to discover that they seem to be rotting, uh, like a corpse would rot and are spitting up maggots before going full zombie and going around looking for brains, which is very funny. Willoughby shows up and can apparently understand the team when they growl. He shows them a ransom tape from Darren, who's trying to ransom the head, before leading them through a portal to a wooded area while calling them Solomon's Grundy. Come on, Solomon's Grundy. <laughs> it's very funny. And of course, they're going there to confront Darren with Lady Rouge, who is supposed to hit him with petrified dragon pee that Willoughby has for some reason, but she shifts into a footstool, which is weird. She turns into a footstool and ends up not being able to deliver the dragon's piss. And although it does, the vial does break open and some of it hits him, but it doesn't work. Darren then reveals that he is in fact a butt monster, just like all the butt monsters that ran wild in, in season one, before a whole pack of butt monsters attack. And the team, who are still zombified, by the way, have to try to fight them off. It was quite funny, actually. After all that happens, they get the head back, and the Niles head tells Willoughby to feed his brains to the team because it will cure their zombie situation. Rouge then discloses that she knows that she's a sister of Dada and makes a deal with the chief to give her some documents that will help her understand her past or remember it if she makes sure that the team eats the brains and leaves them alone and she agrees. After they eat the chief's brains, which I'm not sure exactly how Cliff was able to do that, and they're back to normal, they wonder if they're cannibals now and Larry says that it was peaceful being a zombie because all he was concerned about was finding brains as opposed to all his other worries. Lady Rouge reads through some of the documents and learns that Chief had assessed her to be a cancer of a person that needed to be eliminated. One presumes she knew this before, but she's forgotten it, so she remembers it, reading these documents. 
Jane goes ahead and burns the effigy of the chief that she made, and she kind of cry laughs while shouting, eat me at it, which was kind of funny. Cliff goes ahead and orders some pills to treat Parkinson's online, which I suspect isn't going to turn out great, but we'll see, because he thinks he has Parkinson's, which would explain his weird physicality lately. Larry seems to have a growth on his abdomen, and he's still puking, even though he's no longer a zombie. Lady Rouge then rewatches the old film strip, and in a moment when the camera pulled back upon shooting the film strip, it showed that Rita was there. So she spots Rita in the film clip. The next thing we see as the episode closes out is that one of the butt creatures survived and is now on its way to the town where the team lives. So that's how the episode ended. This was a pretty good episode. The butt monsters are outrageous. I mean, it's just nutty. Anything with Michelle Gomez in it is great. She's awesome. So I like that. The whole zombie thing was really funny because they do growl like zombies traditionally growl in zombie movies and zombie shows. But in this case, there were subtitles for the audience to know what they were saying. And like I said, Willoughby could communicate with them. So that was kind of funny. Some of it didn't make sense though. Like, okay, Cliff, I guess, is a human brain. So if he turned into a zombie, he would still walk and talk like a zombie, I guess. But then how did he eat the brains? And supposing he could eat them, how did it go, you know, to his brain? You know what I'm saying? To cure it? Like, how did that happen? I don't know. It's, you know, just repeat to yourself. It's just a show. You should really just relax. So I guess that's what we're going to have to do with that. I kind of hope they're done with the chief because, although I guess they're not with Lady Rouge, going after him and everything or wanting to go after him. But this whole thing of where they're mad at the chief because he messed them up and they just keep talking about it every episode. It's kind of getting, you know, on my nerves. But this show continues to be great, and I can't wait for the next episode. I'll be back with a review of the next episode once it airs. Until then, I wish you all peace and long life.